Hey everyone, uh, we're stri streaming live to YouTube now. I see a few of you waiting here in the lobby. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm super excited to have you on today. I just did a course on how to say your name correctly and I'm sure I'm still gonna say it wrong. So please everyone forgive me, but I think Fabin Rashid, is that better than what I said before? That's, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, I doubt it's perfect, but thank you for your kindness. Um, I'm super excited to have you on the show today, especially because I first discovered your work through something kind of fun. Um, I connected with Async to share some different artworks uh, from different people and, and new artists, um, old artists as well that are, are launching things on Async. And I also want to start doing, um, talking about some other pieces that are launching other places as well. But that's how I discovered your work, which was really cool. Um, and I, it's such a unique and sort of organic connection to your work that I had with chatting about it and reading your description and even the blog that was written about that piece that you launched there. So we'll get into all of that, but um, it's really cool to just have you on, get to hear firsthand about that piece and about all of the other work you do. So thank you for joining me tonight, or for morning for you, but night for me. Yeah, I mean, thank you, Josie. I mean, I've been watching your channel for quite some time now. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been listening to all the great artists on the channel for some time. And uh, it's, it's really great to be here. And uh, yeah, I mean, the journey and other things. Be, yeah, it, it would be great to talk about it. Also. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Motion Mel. How are you? <laughs> I saw your little emoji in the chat. Um, and feel free, you guys know the drill, definitely pop any questions in the chat as we're streaming and I'll ask them live and read anything out. Um, also, at the end of the show, before we do the closing questions, I'm going to do um, another async sort of uh, thing that I did before where I share a few of the pieces um, that will be going up for auction soon there. And then also, um, I will start doing, not this time, but on the next episode, Stella Bell does an amazing, you guys should follow her on um, Twitter, but does an amazing recap of some of her favorites from Super Rare. So I want to start incorporating some of her favorites lists as well, because, um, and we'll have to have her on the show too, but she, she does a really cool roundup. So I'll start including those as well. But tonight, before the questions after, we'll do the async roundup. Um, so yeah, let's let's just get started. I would love to hear a little bit about yourself and your journey to creating art and, and sort of where that started for you. Okay. Um, so uh, I think uh, I'll start with the second part of the question, the art part, uh, which is, uh, I started pretty early during my childhood with, you know, the whole thing about making sketches and everything in childhood. But uh, I think uh, at an, as rather than thinking of it as art i used to create i would use the word create and that started with, i don't know uh, maybe 10 15 years back and uh, i've been doing that ever since but as a mainstream artist you know exhibiting and everything it's it's just been about a couple of years now i think it started two years back and uh, had a couple of international exhibitions and some of the uh, exhibitions uh, back at home and uh, of course crypto art uh, i love to be in crypto art so um, yeah, I think uh, as as of myself, I uh, I call myself a creative of creator of experiences rather. Uh, so uh, there are a couple of things which I do. I create for creating. I create for uh, you know uh, playing uh, or create for play. So there are these particular experiences that I like where we are not just the creator, but there is also the uh, the the person who is consuming it also works with us uh, like the audience is participating with us so that's that's kind of where I've been working on for some time I, I I started off as an electronics engineer and then I went into uh, programming for a long time and then I started I did my master's in interaction design and I worked in design for uh, a couple of years I, I worked with Xerox and Adobe and then uh, naturally the whole Adobe thing gave me the push towards being a creative and uh, then uh, it's all been a journey from there. I, I also play a lot with technology, mostly 
uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, or uh, artificial intelligence these days. So mixing all these together, I make stuff uh, which I hope people like. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, absolutely. That's... And your your background, it, it just makes so much sense, especially when you're talking about you like to create experiences and you like to really um, engage the viewer and the person that's consuming the art. I think that's really cool, especially because of the piece that I first saw by you. I don't know if you want to jump right into that, but I I thought it was so unique the way that you did that and and sort of this whole story built around it, but almost people felt like they were creating that story by collecting these pieces that were, you know, placed around the world. So I'd love to hear more about that, but I guess a question that maybe makes a little bit more sense before that is how you found NFTs and how you started to decide to tokenize your work. Yeah, I think uh, so. Uh, around 2016, 17, uh, I've been I've been thinking. Of, I mean, I've been reading about blockchain uh, during my time in the corporate world, and I've been uh, trying to figure out if blockchain could be used in different. Uh, segments like say you want to make an agreement for a real estate deal or something like that and I, i've been thinking about it and naturally being in adobe at that time i was thinking what why not have uh, you know art tied to it and then i forgot all about it for what uh, another two years and then suddenly uh, I, I, well, I i left adobe in 2019 early on took a break from the whole uh, you know, corporate life, and I wanted to focus myself uh, in my family health, art, and everything. So, uh, I stumbled upon crypto art uh, when one of my friends, Daim Aldiad, uh, he was he was part of the generative artist group, and he was talking about how he is in this uh, platform called uh, Super Rare, and he has been uh, selling these amazing works there. And I was really uh, curious because it was digital art that he's selling while everyone else is talking about you know prints and uh, you know uh, installations and those kind of things so it's like uh, digital art as such then i had this conversation with him and he introduced me to these platforms and told me why not try it out and then i think they Dame took a break after that but then i started early early this year around february maybe and then since then it's been a journey it's been amazing that's I mean, so awesome. a lot of people all around the world, a lot of uh, communities and, you know, friends and a uh, lot of uh, conversations, a lot of, lot of things have happened. That's, that's just been amazing. Yeah. yeah, that is amazing. It's cool that one of your friends got you into it and, and you just kind of fell down, fell into the rabbit hole, as they say, from there. Um, and, and you found async, which is a really great place for the kind of work you're talking about with the interactivity. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about your piece, Pilgrimage, and and how what the main idea was for it, um, and just how you how you thought of that sort of interactive piece? Yes. So uh, I think I'll start by, you know, talking about how I went into async. So async mm -hmm. was, I mean, I, I, when I was, uh, when I started in crypto art, I've been checking out all these platforms and suddenly I hear about the first art piece in async and all the uh, all the amazing collaboration that happened for it and uh, I was like really uh, I mean it, it's written programmable art and I'm like I am trying to do programmable art and there is this platform doing programmable art why should it why should I wait so I'm, I'm trying to read about it I started talking to Conlin and uh, you know, Todd, Nate uh, and yeah. uh, everybody there Lisa and then uh, eventually, uh, no, I first applied, of course, first applied and they uh, got me in. And then I started realizing that Async is an amazing platform in the sense that it's not just for people who knows to code or, you know, who knows to uh, uh, do programmable uh, creations, interactive creations, but it's also for anybody who wants to create some kind of interactivity to their art. That, that just blew my mind. It's, that's that's very inclusive and that's bringing everyone together and yeah from there it started uh i had multiple conversations with them and they said there is a chance that we could include or connect uh, code-based artwork with this it's not necessarily a layer-based artwork that we have in it and then i explored uh, one of the first pieces uh there uh, called regalia which is that thing in the back over mm -hmm. there 
So uh, that was uh, essentially an interactive piece where, uh, or participatory piece where people could actually draw these mandalas uh, with me. I mean, I was just create, giving them this this whole interface for that. And uh, yeah, that's how it sort of started. And then uh, pilgrimage. Pilgrimage happened, uh, it's, it's a really uh, interesting story. I uh, So uh, my fiance uh, goes on these uh, daily morning walks and uh, I thought I should leave some messages for her. Uh, and then uh, I was trying to see what I can do. And I, I mean, I've been working in this augmented reality based, location based stuff for some time now. So I thought like, why not try this out? And I, I, was, I checked out some of the APIs there. And of course it was, I mean, there was this small, uh, this really good set of APIs which could make me, uh, which would help me do this very easily. And then I created some of these artworks on the paths she follows during a morning walk. And that was like, uh, it was an interesting experience. So you create something and that turns out to be something else. And that, that's, that's, that's the best thing about this. So I put up these messages and she said it, that was the best, uh, most interesting and most energized work she ever had because it was kind of a treasure hunt. That's awesome. You're going around and you're finding something, reading these messages. And then I was like, okay, I'm working with Async now. Why not try this out as a whole artwork? And uh, I think that's how the whole concept of pilgrimage was born. That's really yeah. cool. I love that something that was really special in your personal life influenced this piece for I think the she community. Is right now. Oh, even better. That's very Hello. cool. Hi. <laughs> uh, that's so cool that that was the inspiration for it. And do you want to tell everyone who maybe isn't familiar with the piece that's watching this back, um, how you took that concept of sort of leaving notes for her to find and turned it into what pilgrimage is and like yeah. what, what it does? Yeah. So, um, so I, 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 I worked with 3D, specifically 3D modeling, mesh-based modeling for some time, uh, about eight or 10 years back. And this was the first time after that, that I took it up. I wanted to make something in augmented reality, something which would uh, be like a collectible, something which is, uh, which has kind of an anthropomorphic form, but I don't want it to be, you know, very highly detailed. So the, the problem with, uh, putting this as an AR artwork is that there are a lot of things we, which goes behind the scenes. I mean, I could have had a very detailed model, but that won't work because it will be a heavy file and it won't load when people go there and all those things. So I, I in the end, I thought I'll have a simple model, but a series of models and that could be distributed all around the world. So the whole com concept of pilgrimage was that we have this community, this amazing community for crypto art. And I have friends all, all over the world right now. I mean, we just started this year. A lot of people have been talking. To. And then I thought like, why not have an opportunity for them to maybe collect? But my idea was it will take a few months or maybe a year or two to collect because right now we can't travel and all those things. So I thought, uh, let me just put up these uh, 3D models in certain cultural locations all around the world. And then I put up, uh, I made this, I sculpted all these uh, nine models and put it up in these locations. And okay, let's see what happens. I talked to the Async team and uh, they were like, oh, this is really cool. Uh, this is something interesting. And uh, Lisa was like, hey, this is Pokemon Go, but in a, a larger scale, a scale. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's exactly. Uh, I mean, Pokemon Go is a really fun way with all, all these, uh, you know, collectibles all around the world. And now what if we could have an NFT that is representing these collectibles all around the world? What if people collaborate together to collect it? And uh, that's how it started. And we uh, we worked together and, we, and I put up these uh, pieces, the nine pieces in different locations. Most of them were in cities, easy access, easily accessible, but some of them were in some of the remote locations. And uh, one of them is not yet collected also. Oh so, wow! Uh, I thought yeah. So, uh, so have eight uh, have eight of them been collected? Yeah, eight There's of them one has left. been collected. There's one in Japan, okay. hiding in a very remote uh, temple. It's an amazing okay. temple. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's yet to be collected. But uh, yeah, that's uh, all the eight of them. All the nine of them were put up, and I just I just thought let me do a very subtle release. I don't want to make a lot of noise this time. Just 
put it up and then I, I gave a trailer to it and then I released it and then I saw so many people talking to each other and uh, there was Pablo from Museum of Crypto Art and uh, he was he was very enthusiastic about collecting it. He said uh, he was talking to old friends and he was uh, connecting with uh, childhood friends and everything. And that was amazing to hear. So when you create an art, you have this thing in mind that okay, this is what it's going to do. This is what your concept is and the aesthetic is and all this. But then when you show it to the world, it turns out to be something else. Totally. Something you don't even know what it could be. People find a lot of meaning to it. People find a new story to it. And this whole new story built around. Everybody's collaborating. Everybody's connecting. During this pandemic time, they connected with folks in different cities. And then they collected. That was just amazing. One week, within one week, I think all seven, seven of them were collected. And the next wow. week, the eighth one was collected. And yeah, one of them still remains. That's really cool. While we were chatting, um, Museum of Crypto Art commented, field trip to Japan. And Lander said, yeah. taking the whole class, Mocha. <laughs> and Emotional <laughs> said, I'll bring lunch. That's perfect. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring the snack if I can go. Um, that's that's so cool and such a unique i mean it's just so cool to hear from the start of like where that idea spawned from and grew from with these these small notes and then hearing that other people are reaching out to their friends in in these different locations almost like sending them a note to go find this secret note thing so it's this cool kind of chain um that gets people connected especially in such an uncertain and weird time for the world with with covid and everything so it is it is cool to have that some sort of excitement that's not just in the virtual realm that like brings people to real places so that's pretty unique um and so the last okay oh we can take the magic school bus yes that sounds awesome magic crypto bus um so that piece did you did you expect that the um i guess majority of the elements would be collected so fast did you expect for it to be through a longer time yeah definitely for a longer time i mean i thought at least a few months because uh, especially because of the pandemic and everything uh, people won't be able to travel and I knew some of those remote ones. Uh, so there was one in the Christ the Redeemer statue in uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And uh, there was one in Todaiji Temple in Japan. I knew these would be the last to collect. This would be very hard to collect. So I thought at least a few months was what I thought. And especially I'm a growing artist. I don't have a big name in the crypto art world and everything. So people are just discovering this whole thing. And then I thought it will take time for people to know. And then, uh, but uh, I mean, there were these amazing people who shared and you know shared across all the Discord servers. I would really love to give a shout out to George Boya. He's an amazing person. He 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 made sure that uh, some of the folks in different areas get to know about pilgrimage. And uh, yeah, that that was really amazing. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it was really surprising. It uh, was collected in one week time all of these and one of the most interesting thing was that i am from india and i put one of the pieces in the north of india i'm, I'm from south of india i put one of the pieces in north of india and i had a lot of friends there but the person who collected the piece in india was from turkey he oh. coordinated with one of his friends in india and collected it so okay, i mean really although funny. i had a lot of people here and they were willing to they were planning to collect it it was collected by some okay. Very interesting. And are all eight that have been collected all by different people? Um, yeah, I I'm think assuming. there were some which were collected by the same person, but most of it were by different people. Uh, uh, there was Turek, there was uh, AU, but there was uh, Pablo, of course. Uh, and there was, I mean, a lot of different people. I mean, cool. uh, yeah. That's so cool. Most, most of most of them through friends. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh no no. That, that's that's really special to sort of bring together all of these collectors in a unique way that um, we don't get to see that often. And I think it also gets the wheels spinning for other people who are putting out these sort of um, NFTs that, that they want to be interactive and things like that. And not only making it interactive, like 
like I said, in the virtual realm, like making it interactive somehow in the physical, um, which is really unique and, and very cool to have those worlds sort of collide. Um, do you have any other pieces that you've been either working on or have released that have some sort of special interactivity or any ideas like that for future stuff? Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, before before just going there, I'd mm -hmm. also like to give a shout out to Fosinati. Okay. Uh, yeah, he, he, he collected the one in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought there won't be anyone there, but I, I wanted one there. But yeah, I, I just want to thank him for that. Yes, of um, course. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, interactive pieces, I, I have plans for a couple of them right now. Uh, one of them, which I've been working for at least a month, two months right now, mostly because I've been, uh, you know, bouncing off from that to other projects. Was, uh, it's it's a it's a three D uh, form which is sound reactive. So based on your sound, the whole form of the sculpture changes. And I wanted this to be an async piece where uh, the different parameters would change the form of the three uh, D model. So I mean, it's already built. But, uh, you know, just the final financing of it, you know, the final uh, touches have to be done. And uh, also, I need to work with async to integrate it. But yeah, that's something I've been uh, working on. I, I also made a couple of sound reactive pieces before where you kind of, you know, uh, there is this uh, whole art which moves or kind of draws. So I was like asking this question, what if you could paint with sound? So you just talk mm. and paint. Uh, so that's that's something I did previously. Interactively, I, I did Regalia, which was uh, I think one of my first uh, bigger projects, and uh, yeah, that also uh, involved a lot of people uh, drawing and you know, sharing their uh, Regalia creations. Um, I think uh, interactivity. That's just about it for now. Uh, although I've done a lot of work in interactive. Uh, designed for a long time now. Uh, yeah, that's right now what is in my mind. That's exciting. Yeah. I would love if you want to share to hear more about the behind the scenes of making something interactive and even like physical, like in these physical locations. Like, I just don't even know how that sort of thing works. Like, can you walk through the experience of you placing something in a certain location and then someone? going to collect it yeah uh, let me just share the screen also sure so I'll, I'll kind of give a brief of the journey of pilgrimage also on the way so uh, yeah i think uh, the first thing which i had to do for pilgrimage uh, especially was that you know i have to make sure these things are tied to the GPS location basically. Mm -hmm. So essentially, what we are doing in the in the code is uh, you get the GPS location of the phone, and you kind of uh, create this. Uh, I mean, uh, kind of uh, fetch this 3D model and you show it in the screen. And there is an augmented reality mode where you can post 3D model in AR, and this will show only if you are within two kilometers of the GPS location. So uh, two kilometers is a wider range. We can go as low as 100 meters or so. Uh, but uh, the idea was to make sure that people don't have to go to the exact location. So if you say a Todaiji temple, you don't have to go to Todaiji temple itself, but anywhere in two kilometer radius around it. Okay. So uh, that's basically how it started. But the fun thing was when you're generally creating a program, you're coding it, you can make sure, you can do the trial and error there itself. You can, you can, you know, uh, change the code, debug it, everything in the place itself. But for this particular piece, I had to, uh, you know, take my vehicle and go all the way to a location. If there is a bug, I'll have to come back all the way back to my home, change it again, then go back. So it was fun. Like I had to do a couple of trips to make sure that it all works and, you know, it all shows up in the right places. And then, um, I put it up all around the world, and I don't know if it will work. Uh, <laughs> to be to be to be fair, it uh, there were a couple of instances where it didn't work, uh -huh. primarily because some of the phones uh, didn't detect the location proper, properly. So uh, the easy way out was to restart the phone, and it worked. Uh, 
but i i kind of gave a set of you know a technical details on the collection so that it will be easier for people to follow some of these things to make sure it works but a lot of learnings from this uh, i thought uh, next time if i'm doing something like this i need to make sure that everything works before they go to the location everything is uh, ready and set before going to the location and would you and, have to have uh, someone like go there and and test it right so at each location uh no that was the thing i was taking a i was doing a risk there i mean i was taking a risk there i just i just tried it out. let's see what happens okay awesome and uh, surprisingly all of it i think except one of them didn't work uh, really well one or two of them Mm -hmm. and mostly that was because of the location uh, detection problem but yeah i mean I, i'm glad that it worked and I, i was also having conversations with a couple of people on how to extend this project probably maybe uh, what if we could have a worldwide gallery an augmented reality gallery and mm -hmm. everybody put up their art um, doesn't matter 2d or 3d everybody put up their art all around the world and you know you go to a location and you see their art local artists So as a local that. artist in this place, yeah, that's that's kind of what I was uh, driving it. Yeah, that's amazing. I love these photos. These photos are so cool. Yeah, I mean that's the, the interesting part was to have the cultural monument along with your artwork. I mean, and people collecting it, so you can see this. I mean, this is such an epic video. There is a sun in the backdrop, and uh, it just goes up, and there is this. model which is like worshiping or something like that i mean yeah yeah wow. it just it just uh, it just felt really good to see that uh, your art is being placed uh, in different locations in the world and people are you know viewing it there yeah that was, that was such a great journey these are so cool especially seeing through you know everyone else's eyes seeing them discovering and and seeing the the AR of this is just so cool in all these different places around the world. Yeah. This was Hagia Sophia. Oh, this is the one in India. So I'm like uh there is a person coordinating all the way from another country to wow. like from my own country. Oh, that's really great. That's beautiful. This was in Nigeria. Right. Yeah, and the Louvre pyramid. So I so I think cool. the augmented reality didn't work here. So And this was in front of the Museum of Modern Art. It was it was a tiny. I mean, the model was so tiny. Oh yeah, I see it right there in the middle. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. And what are the why? Why are some of the models big, and then and then that one was small, for example? Uh, yeah, I mean, basically you can pinch zoom it, pinch ah. zoom the model. But yeah, some of the people who collected it didn't do zoom it, or they didn't know it yet. I mean, it sure. wasn't very intuitive that you can pinch zoom it. So uh, it was largely my fault that way. So. and then i made all these renders to support you know, like just make sure that everybody has uh, I, i mean their collections are shown in renders so. yeah that's very beautiful i love that and it's cool also that you used a piece that you know looks like some sort of you know humanoid form like you can see sort of a person in it which is also kind of cool just like discovering these little like people around the world that's very yeah. cool i love that And I also love how you documented everything. I think that's really huge as well for people who are collecting these and and discovering them. Um, it, it's a very awesome documentation. Thank you. Uh, yeah. The so I I have, I have this website where I keep some of my. I mean, I'm sure most of my work here, but the recently I've just segmented it out such that art is separate. What I'm making art. So uh, regalia was uh, separated out. So I just make sure that people know what the project is. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's just about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful. I love how your works look very different, but a lot of them share a similar color palette, which is really interesting. 
yeah i mean uh mostly i mean from pastel to the saturated i would mostly lie in the pastel area mm-hmm. more than the saturated area yeah because regalia is more saturated than chromology chromology was a fun little thing where you can you know uh just open So this is a fun little play of colors so you can just go wow. to colors and yeah. that's really cool it's, it's a generative art basically but a more interactive generative art and this is also in async so if you switch the layers of async there'll be different modes of creation for this so you one of them is an uh, you know ink drop kind of a thing and another is a swirl and all this so yeah that's that's another one of my uh, async pieces that so you can see that if you draw like this it will just drip down that's awesome i love i love how interactive that is and i see a lot of like warm warm even though it's pastel but warm tones that you use which i think are really beautiful together yeah cool so that, that's yeah it this was more like a fun play kind of a creation so on the one hand i create all these uh, artworks which is just for play fun and all those things you mm-hmm. can just another one of that well uh, and on the other hand i have these serious artworks which is like you know more into philosophy and concepts and all those sure yeah it's nice to have that different range and that you can play with for sure good names for everything by the way too. Sometimes I find it pr- difficult to name things, but um I like that. It just it just comes. I don't know why. It just once you would just start creating and you're like, "Okay, oh, this is the name." Yeah, exactly, exactly. Sometimes even the name evolves the art. So, uh you you start with a name uh and then so Regalia started off like a mandala drawing thing, but mm-hmm. when I used the name Regalia, it was like you know this should be something else it should there should be some amount of royalty or something like that so create it with it the color should match that all those things and then it turned out to be something new. that's really and, funny uh, yet another one is this whole series called ode so ode is a series where i used ai generated art to create a bunch of uh, works and uh, i added generated music to it and a certain poetry to come along with it Wow. So once I use the term ode, I change the whole thing. So you can see this. So now if you can hear the sound. Um I cannot. So yeah, this is more or less like on some of those popular style gan based videos where you uh-huh. you know morph between two uh, images in AI. But this is something I did a little bit of manipulation and video editing and everything. Created very subtle moments basically. Uh there's a piano playing in the background it generated music and everything but yes you can see this very subtle moments yeah it looks it looks really organic which is so funny when we're talking yeah. about ai that things can be organic but it is very cool the bottom looks like a beating heart almost thank you uh yeah so i funny thing was i i curated a i i scraped a lot of watercolor based uh, video, uh, videos and images for this uh-huh. and then i created a data set based on that um to start to create these images uh, so this was one of the most popular and i think the first one to sell also wow oh i wish you could hear the that, music also that one looks i mean it it's really crazy looking it looks like almost a really intense like beetle or insect yeah. you know morphing and changing but it looks kind of evil at the same time <laughs> it's very yeah, cool yeah i mean I, i named it sinistral yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it's very beautiful though like beetles and moths like i see a lot of like insect dark insects you see a skull also eventually It's a really cool piece. So how many pieces did you have to feed to the GAN to be able to create that? Uh I think uh it was around 1000 images. I mean wow. a lot of them were uh, a lot of them didn't have the exact texture so I had to remove and select. 
or some of that but, but it was around a thousand people wow and then based on that so if you can see this one particularly has those watercolor textures uh, really well taken that's beautiful yeah it reminds me of the fall yeah <laughs> So uh, yeah, this is another one which uh, I call the womb. It turned out to be something. I mean, this was very surprising. This particular aesthetic. Uh huh. So yeah, just I just thought this was. I mean, I I gave a whole black background to just you know focus on this particular. Yeah, that was a very cool piece. And you can almost like see the, like you said, yeah. the. Uh, almost like embryos growing in, in inside it's very cool and the movement i love when there's there's these sort of movement to pieces whether it's animations or ai changing or gan changing them in between it, it gives it this sort of it takes on a new life when when you have the movement for sure and a new meaning a lot of the times as well so it's really cool to see see your pieces that do that we have some comments. Yeah. Good going, beautiful work. <laughs> yep, names are important when people are saying beautiful. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I mean, probably uh, another, I mean, you asked me about interactive art, right? So I made a couple of them in Maker's Place, uh, but Maker's Place uh, can afford only uh, videos right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I put up them and I've actually uh, kind of added the link in the description for now. I mean, as long as we can't have interactive art, it's better to have it. So this was one of them called Kronos. And uh, it's essentially uh, it's essentially an artwork which uh, is interactive and uh, it just moves. Uh, and based on day or night, you're the, there is a central uh, symbol which changes. So the day it's the sun and the night it's the moon and it's, it's a very subtle interactive art and i kind of it was the first time i played with this library called 3js for using 3d based you know uh, code creation so that's, yeah. that's something i would find that is unique yeah that's funny that's I, I hear a lot of people chatting about that and i've used it before in the past when i did coding classes but i can't remember at all how those things work it's fun. It's fun. It's really fun to work with. I mean, uh, it doesn't. It just requires your basic set of coding skills, and 3ds is all about just adding stuff to. You know, it's like adding a light or adding an object, and you can just place it around and change the numbers. Right. And you can get these amazing results. So this is another one, another interactive work. Uh, I called it the sides, flipping the sides. So basically, you have the yin yang symbol, and you have to flip all the time between the yin and the yang, because uh, that's how the energy works, right? You have an mm -hmm. up and a down, and you're, you're finding the balance in between and all these things, so uh, just a fun one. Yeah, that's a, I keep I keep looking at that one. That one definitely catches my eye a lot. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, another one would be this, this whole AI brushes project, which I did. Yeah, uh, so... I'd love to hear more about that for sure because that that really interests me we were talking earlier about the the ai brushes yeah it, it, it's it's uh, so it started largely from my work in adobe so i mm -hmm. I, I i uh worked on creating uh these animated brushes so you can so we basically with photoshop and uh, you know procreate brushes or fresco brushes you can mm -hmm. create this uh, textures and strokes and everything but can you create animations using such brushes Oh, so uh, I actually uh, uh, presented this presented this in uh, Adobe Mac. Uh, so so let me just show you what happened. So you have this. Uh, so if you want to draw rain, basically, you select this rain brush and then you just start drawing. Oh, wow. And it's all animated. You can just see it's, it just start dripping. So, that is uh, really cool. Yeah, and uh, and then the funny thing is that you can actually uh, sorry uh, you can actually control the rain speed and you know, rain density, 
the sound that goes with it and everything so it's essentially an interactive kind of a creation uh huh and then you can uh, basically uh, change all the parameters of such uh, animated brushes and you can change it based on that so i was really obsessed with brushes for a long time and yeah. uh, post my time in adobe i started working on artificial intelligence based creation and i use some of those techniques to create brushes with artificial intelligence so this uh, sorry not this one so uh, this is something called a lava brush so essentially i took textures of lava and i used it as a stroke so you can see the stroke over here and it's converting into molten oh, lava I see. and then i i put that in augmented reality and tried it out let's see what happens now and uh, i mean it didn't turn out to be great but yeah it was just a trial worth having so you can oh, see cool. the ocean with so it's all you know fear yeah. and flaming yeah. see that that's really cool and unique i love how you're able to combine all of these different talents that you have into you know these new experiences and also creating these brushes and everything like that that's i mean that's huge to for even other other folks like if you can use that on procreate to to animate different different sections um that's a big deal yeah i mean uh, it was really interesting to see how each of these textures could be taken out and you know, created so here you can see i'm just drawing clothes mm -hmm. i mean not clothes exactly but the texture of the clothes uh, right. by you know just just drawing on it and other things so i mean many of these explorations were what oh, product cool. uh, but not art but some of them were art i mean i i just i mean it was all on the gray area between art and product so this is another one where you have this you draw stick figures and it converts it into a character as such oh, so you can cool. you know draw different stick figures you don't have to go the whole way drawing the whole character you can just draw the stick figures and the characters consistent. Wow. Just this fun little exploration based on that. And then uh yeah, I I took up this 36 days of type uh just like 36 days of type there is 47 days of devanagari script which is mm -hmm. devanagari uh, is the script uh, for some of the languages in India. Uh mm -hmm. so um I used uh, some of the images from that and created these uh, textures. Again this look more watercolorish but not exactly watercolorish and then i try to go with that and i see okay let's see what happens so trying to create the tool with which you create so i use these stocks on the right side and you can see how the textures are being translated on the left that's so interesting that's really so cool and it's cool because you can play around with those same lines with different textures like you could make her the lava if you wanted yeah. right yeah yeah it's i mean it's essentially translating the strokes so it could be anything that way right and perhaps uh sorry perhaps uh, this was my most famous video mm -hmm. i mean it, it just it just uh, it was essentially an uh, i'll talk about it it was essentially an art exploration so you paint on the left side wow and it's translated into this realistic uh, art artwork on the right side so uh this was this was largely an exploration towards how traditional artworks uh, like you know traditional painting styles could be trans could be uh used in the new digital era and you know augment it and enhance it and you can use augmented reality or ai technologies to you know enhance it you're not just leaving the past you're not leaving the traditional artwork you're bringing that also into this digital world so that was the whole concept of this artwork and i posted it uh, and there was a fun little debate uh, there was a lot of people saying hey this is a really good tool i can uh, i don't have to learn to draw i can just you know draw something <laughs> and just create this real amazing and there were other people like okay ai is going to take my job i'm an artist and it's just going to take my job away it's just doing things which i uh, which i want to do and all those things so you can see all these polarized opinions people are talking about this this is something else this is something else and it, it just as i said before you create an artwork and it turns out to be something else that is what was happening here it evolved into something bigger than what i can see and it was uh yeah and it, it, the whole concept around it was uh 
totally uh, worth conversing about and i i actually uh, created i mean i actually minted this recently and uh, uh, there is also a um, digital twin of this mm-hmm. which is basically uh, the dot art domains team has given me the ability to create essentially like how we have nfts for mm-hmm. a digital artwork we can have a digital twin for a physical artwork so this right. is one of them which is uh, that so i created a physical twin of uh, uh, sorry a digital twin of the physical uh, drawing of that and i called the artwork noam prem <laughs> it's just again play with the names and all these things so i have a question about that piece in particular so if yeah. i was to use this tool and i drew the tree you know on the left side would that do you have to like program it differently or would it on the right side would it have drawn the tree on the left bottom corner as well uh, so uh, nvidia has had released this uh, i just have to give them the shout out for the mm-hmm. actual algorithm uh, it's called nvidia's gorgan mm-hmm. so nvidia had released this uh, tool to you know translate. oh i've seen this video oh my gosh it was yeah, so cool yeah translate some of these uh, you know uh, yeah. flat shaded te- uh, images into uh, realistic images yeah. so it's basically based on the color grading over here that is being translated to the uh, actual drawing so i uh, what i did was i took that to show the concept of how traditional art the painting which we do traditionally we're using brushes and uh, colors that could be translated uh, into this and uh, to answer your question i actually segmented out these colors mm-hmm. and then used it to translate it so basically i had to process which color is what sure. and you can see all these uh, gradation in the colors i had to make sure that it is uh, flat shaded and everything okay yeah mostly processed it and, yeah. yeah that's so interesting wow especially cuz i mean i'm sure it's actually harder when you're physically painting versus doing it on the computer cuz it's just a color block on the computer versus here you have the different shades of each color and you have to say no 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 yeah. that's all grass that's not something different yeah huh so uh yeah i mean i was i was so it's not just you know translating into this realistic inter- interpretation what can we can we you know use this kind of a drawing and can we have another style over here on the right side say if i i try to do this and i translate it into different styles on the right side i can you know paint it and create something based on that so that's that's how i was thinking of it your it's it's kind of this moment in uh, history where you have this digital art influx they call it the mm-hmm. renaissance 2.0 and everything but there's this digital art influx and now can we uh, make sure that our traditional art forms and artistic methods are you know not ignored or not just said okay that's that's long past but can we also make sure those also come along and you know uh, we work them together and uh, create more uh, creative expressions out of it so as you see most of my creations was using some of the traditional art forms mixed with the digital art forms that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of what this yeah absolutely I love how you have this all collected in one place. It's so amazing to be able to just scroll through and see see everything you're working with um because you have so many different types of types of work. Yeah, I mean uh, I just had this whole project in one place so that you know it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. So I can just always come here. Oh, this absolutely. was uh, another f- yeah. This was another fun little piece. Uh, this is more of, uh, I mean, I, the whole climate change uh, conversation was happening, and I thought of creating what would be the before and the after of climate mm. change, and so that. I mean, this was using artificial intelligence, so you can see how uh, I've translated this into this image uh, using AI technology. So this was how the hill was before and. essentially how it is now after climate change so a wow. couple of explorations based on that wow yeah these are and powerful yeah, this is just this is just drastic <laughs> right i hope this doesn't ever happen yeah and uh, yeah one final narrative on climate change was this uh, concept where i kind of use the uh, sliders to show how mankind or human kind could easily Uh, manipulate nature these days and you know influence mm-hmm. nature which is not such a great thing so um if you see in this video or your yeah so 
So you have, you can just yeah, uh, control nature just like how do you just remove tree cover? Just move a slider. That's that's kind of how it's happening. If you have a forest there and you want to build something there, that's just cut that's off the forest. So that's, cool. that's the first thing we're doing. Yeah, that's. It's yeah. that that's really crazy. It's amazing the how these little sliders can just make a big movement and meaning within the piece but then it also does translate so much to real life and what that means you know what we're doing so i think i think you hit exactly the points you wanted to hit with this piece about climate change um and it's really a beautiful way to do it especially allowing someone else to interact with it yeah thank you yeah that that's uh yeah i mean uh i i just wanted to showcase that you know people we might be doing things which, uh, which should, which which is kind of uh, impacting. We might be doing smaller things, but it's impacting at a larger scale, kind of like the butterfly effect. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we we might not be even intentionally doing it, but there is a lot of effect. Not necessarily for climate change. There are, there are a lot of things which happen around us, which is multiplied from our actions. So mm -hmm. just to create awareness around that. Yeah. And like I said, I mean, such a powerful statement to have, you know, these sliders, which represents like the choices we make in our life, you know, affect, yeah. <laughs> affect everything directly. So, I mean, really powerful pieces here. It's really beautiful. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I did, so this was another experiment which i did and this so this kind of uh, i was uh, inspired from one of your works uh oh. called filter oh no way which is the iconic image which i i mean when i come to nft space and that's one of those most iconic images that i see all across and i was like uh, thinking of creating these masks or something like that and what i cool. did was i uh, <laughs> yeah uh, and uh, I really love that image. I really love that image. The one which is also featured in the uh, in the graphic of behind the art. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. Uh, so um, it was essentially I create a selected of, uh, set of radical images. Like you know, uh, there, there was this uh, not necessarily radical in the meaning sense, but it's more on the visual sense. Uh -huh. It had a lot of uh, details uh, which was contrasting uh and uh more more like you know uh more like etched images and all those things mm -hmm. i was kind of using those visuals and i kind of tile gan trained it with the faces data sets which is essentially a data sets of faces and uh what happened was i stopped it halfway because uh i i was kind of lazy on the one hand and there was some problems with my credits at that time and then I stopped it halfway and I got this really bad data. And I'm like, oh shit, uh, what, what should I do right now? And then <sighs> I just went, uh, yeah, I just went exploring in the data set and I saw this amazingly unique images, which was uh, like that of the mask. And I could instantly relate it to your uh, image, the whole concept of the gas mask image. Uh, and then I started, okay, let me start a small series on that. Let me see if it works. And I, put up these images based on that. Uh, I called it the MASQ, the masks. And uh, yeah, instantly some of them sold and I, I created a series of them based on that. So this was kind of one of my early explorations in crypto art, I would say. That's so cool. Thank you for being inspired by, you know, one of my really early pieces. That's, I, that's I'm honored to hear that. And, and it's, it's really cool how you can take you know, someone's asked me before, oh, where do you get your inspirations? And I feel like you can really, you get inspired by anything and everything, you know, especially when you're coming into a different, you know, a different skill or a different scene or whatever it is, you kind of just want to absorb everything around you and, and be inspired by it. So thank you. Um, I appreciate that. That's super cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just like I said before, uh, the ripples that we create, it, it just it just creates a lot of things all around us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you for um, sharing that. So, yeah, I think uh, Maker's Place, in Maker's Place, I think this is my uh, last 
project which I have in it's called the latent scenes. It was, it was kind of an exploration of uh, strategy and training using iconographic images and created a very you know high resolution series of it. Very very uh, interesting thing which happened was I didn't intend it to happen, but each of these images has that there is this dot for I can't remember that. There is this dot at the center of the forehead, mm -hmm. like a like an eye kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's this whole concept of how in the spiritual sense you have this third eye and that third eye is uh, able to be, uh, you know, go beyond the physical or whatever realm and be intuitive and all those things. And none of the trained images had this third eye. Oh, but really? All of the, yeah, all of the created images had this third eye. And I was what? like, oh, this is me. That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. Huh. I, How could that? I mean, that's crazy. That's so cool. Yeah, I, 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 I assumed it should be because the machine might have averaged out the two eyes or something, but oh, that wow. was really surprising. I mean, I, I don't know if it is averaged out because you can still see the patch of the left eye over there. Yeah. But that's what I assumed. That's that really so cool and creepy <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> yeah. In a good yeah. way. That's so cool. No, no, that's true. Yeah. Wow. And because of the, you know, the images you were feeding it, you know, they, they are so iconic and all, you know, religious and all of this. And then it comes up with this, this third eye. That's so cool. Yeah. I mean, so I, I, I'm, I kind of, uh, I'm trying to say how saints were, you know, how they transcend, how they go beyond the material knowledge and everything. And, you know, they transcend it. That's suddenly you have this image which is creating this third eye out of no, nothing, and essentially that shows how I don't know. I mean, there's there's this hidden power or something which is showing up. That that really sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah. Those are really cool. I love that that happened. So I think, uh, yeah, this is this is kind of my latest work. It's called GPT three Cs, and this mm -hmm. this kind of went to the New Rips Gallery language model, and uh, yeah, so it it just I wanted to see what the machine imagines. I mean, it's a language; it's all text. It's a text based model, and you can converse with it. You can ask questions and it'll answer but what does it imagine what what is it seeing visually and i asked it to create this image any image based on some of the code it generates and this is the first image it creates and uh, it looks like a floppy disk so is the <laughs> yeah, machine it does. having nostalgia or something <laughs> that's really funny yeah so uh exploration on those lines and uh and I had this uh, uh, painting experiment, which me and my fiance did uh, with, again, GPT-3. So um, we essentially asked GPT-3 to uh, narrate a scene to us and we will draw it. So uh, it says, uh, let me be your eyes and hands and you be my imagination. Let us paint a picture together. Tell me what to paint and I'll digitally paint. So the machine says, start by painting a vibrant red somewhat chaotic background hmm. that painted that. Okay, now let's add light spots to it to add some brightness. Okay, let's see how it goes. And then some dark spots to show some shadows. Interesting. And the machine is a little whimsical. It says, make the background grow darker until the sky is completely dark. So it's, it's now dark. And then again, out of that comes light. Finally, make it fade from black into light. In the light, add a blue sky and then make the light get brighter and brighter. So wow. you see this small sky coming up. This is essentially narrated by the machine. The machine doesn't have any image based training. It's all text based training. Okay. So this is what it is imagining. So kind of imagining. So that's the most interesting part of it. We are trying to draw what the machine imagines. Then draw a ray of light. Uh, going from light, showing the beginning of beautiful day, um, 
then add a then draw a beautiful girl standing in the light who is smiling at me uh add some flowers and trees uh and then that's the, that's the image and add a couple of butterflies to make it all complete so it was a very you know very happy image uh, kind of a, a thing and in the end what the machine wrote was very uh, very interesting mm. the girl in the painting was looking at the machine with admiration the oh. machine had drawn the best picture for the girl in the world the girl said now that i am a painter my life has meaning thanks to you i have a purpose in life before i had to live but now i have a purpose it was like a you know wow yeah a whole touching story and everything so that's so crazy and you know what's really sort of odd but interesting about it is as you're reading through like some of the machines narration almost like mimics some of like the biblical stories of mm, like yeah. of you know night and then creating day and animals yeah. like earth and animals and then humans like it's so oh, yeah. interesting especially these last lines that uh yeah. that the <laughs> machine says it's so crazy that's a really interesting i've never thought of playing around with something like that but that's really interesting and would it no, be I mean, different every time you yeah. do it every time you yeah. talk to gpt3 yeah i mean okay. uh if you it depends on the question but every time you run it there is a i mean mostly it is a different different answer mm-hmm. rare chances it could be the same but mostly it is different. okay wow that's really crazy but yeah i like how you put it in the perspective of creation the genesis yeah like you start from uh darkness and you go all the way to the beauty that's really that's really profound yeah wow that's a really cool piece and i i i love to see the journey and that it doesn't you know spit everything out at once it's really cool to see it line by line and how it does complete the story in the end um it it's crazy also to think like what these types of things will look like a couple years from now you know what i mean and how advanced mm, they'll yeah. be yeah yeah i mean you you could see the language model evolving into some kind of a voice based model mm-hmm. and you might have this assistant or some kind of a uh, you know some kind of a computer always talking to you and uh, just like how we have google assistant or alexa or something like right. that and then it it just tells bad time stories or it just tells these stories which are more uh, imaginative and visual and it's not said before from its own imaginary that's just great yeah i mean that's yeah i don't know where it will go but it's fun that's a cool piece i'm glad you shared that yeah this is another fun little exploration so i made this uh, whole ott platform mm-hmm. which is like netflix or something and uh, essentially i asked a uh, gpt3 to write stories uh like a small short story or like a movie and i created a movie out of it using memes gifs basically oh no so way this is how it goes so uh this is a it's a very bad interface to start with so don't worry about that <laughs> <laughs> so uh it it just starts and so you can read over here this story line by line yeah so says the story starts with a prince who is looking for a bride and ends with a bride who is looking for a prince and it's it's a, it's a meme fetched based on that that's so cool so i had a couple of stories like that uh so this is another interesting one was <laughs> huge in all this one oh what
That's funny also that it talks about the sun a few times. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's a very warm kind of a model, I think. Yeah. It's, there's always some kind of sun coming in. Wow, these stories are just so, it's weird because they like totally don't make sense or they're repetitive, but at the same time, like it makes enough sense that it sounds like a kid was dreaming up some weird story and wrote it, yeah. you know? Yeah, so so the, the thing is that I was imagining how the future of movies would be. Like mm -hmm. uh, you have Netflix, uh, I mean, people are creating this movie. What if there is movie on demand, a new movie on demand always? The machine right. creates a movie for us. So yeah, I mean, uh, I, I had trouble finding text to image translation. So I use, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm also an artist in Tenor, the GIF engine which powers Twitter and Discord. So I kind of use their API to fetch all these GIFs and render it. So yeah, it was another fun little experiment. Uh, yeah, that's how it evolved. That's really cool. I love I love that you're just experimenting with all these different things like colors, like nature, these memes, storylines. Like it, it's so cool to see all the different things that you're fascinated with and then you just like go for it and try it out. Thank you. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a journey. So uh, the day we stop experimenting is the day we stop being creative, I think. So yeah, yeah I, just, I just love to keep experimenting all the time. Thank you for sharing all of these. It's such a such a wide range of work with so many different things going on, but it also just speaks to, like you said, your creativity and, and exploring. And it makes me excited to see what else you put out there for, for everyone else, because it, you're always working on something that's new um, and, and something, at least for me, that I haven't seen before. Um, so that's exciting, exciting to see uh, that you're doing things like that. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I would love to just hear about, I guess, what your what you see this next year looking like for you within NFTs and the art space. Um, are you excited and have some more things planned um, for your community and and just reaching everyone in this area? I guess. Yeah. Uh... I think uh, next year is going to be huge. I think 2020 is the pivoting year. This year was the pivoting year. I mean, things are going to become bigger. Well, so I, I don't see uh, myself as just a creator in this space. I also see myself as an evangelist. Mm -hmm. And I also see myself as a person who, you know, make sure there is a whole community growing around it. Yeah. Uh, not only because uh, you know I, I sell my art and I want my art to be famous or something like that, but it's also about uh, you know this is this is kind of the new norm, and this is how the world is evolving into. I mean, you're, you're going into the whole digital world, uh, and this will be how largely what as 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 far as I know would be how art will be created. So that's that's how I 
came to believe in crypto art and that's how i'm trying to promote crypto art and many for example i uh, i'm giving some talks in corporates uh, based on this and i'm, I'm trying to share how crypto art is uh, kind of uh, something which is powerful in the sense uh, how nft could be used for uh, you know validating some of the things out there and everything so uh, i think that's how i see my journey next year i think beyond being just a creative i i'm trying to be a community member i'm trying to i mean you know i mean I, there was this recent tweet which i shared uh, it was about saying how an artist these days has to do marketing has to mm-hmm. do promotion has to contact people has to you know do a lot of things and you know it's not just that you're just creating something and letting it be there's a lot of things you have to do i mean that's how i see creation these days it's not just you're creating and you just leave it there that's you you as an artist would have to do a lot more to be uh, i mean there are there is of course conflicting opinions on that but uh, you as an artist should also make sure your art is uh, seen or whatever it is intended to do if it is to be seen yes you have to make sure it is seen if it is to be uh, say just like me participate to you will have to make sure it is participate I mean people participate so that's that's i i see it's a more holistic point uh, way of approaching art these days and that's how i see the next year to be at least for myself in terms of the space as such i see a lot of lot of growth i'm very much bullish in terms of nft art for the next year yeah. uh, but i really would love to see a lot more new people coming in collectors and creators both uh, because we still i mean i mean uh, there are these uh, influencers who have come in and who is spreading i mean people are uh, uh, people are getting to know about dot but uh, i would definitely love to see it reach some of the grassroots levels also because there are uh, people in different areas uh, some of these local uh, areas uh, even near me also who are struggling because of the pandemic situation they are artists by themselves and because of the situation they are struggling so if these things could reach them they create amazing art they create way better art than me. and i'm like why are they in this platform so that's that's how i i would see it as a more uh, inclusive uh, opportunity for the future that's that's what i hope and of course there are a lot of problems right now and uh, i mean it's it's the beginning we need to uh, tackle that solve that yeah <laughs> no that's yeah. that's a great answer and i share a lot of those same hopes for for this next year of um nft art and and the crypto space as a whole um so that's great to hear just just what you're thinking and how you hope to be involved in sort of you know progressing those moving those things forward so um i love that thank you for sharing that was really awesome thank and thank you for going through your whole site i have that i have that linked in the youtube um description if you guys want to check that out yourselves as well but it's it's really cool to hear you talk about each um different project you've worked on and what sort of like what inspired you to even do those sort of things and then hear what came out of it um, it's such a unique thing that I'm really happy we get to do on this show because a lot of time, you know, like even when you said with the tweet, now artists have to market, they have to push, they have to do all of these things and build a brand versus just create. Um, it is so special and important for the community to hear why you're creating what you're creating and what um, why it's important to you and where these ideas came from. So I think it's really amazing that you were able to just open the door for us a little bit and let us in um, to see the behind the scenes of your art. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, uh, I mean, uh, so I, I really uh, want to see more people uh, in this amazing platform also, because I know uh, a lot of creatives uh, out there who are, as we discussed, uh, who, who create these amazing works, but uh, I mean, some of the so, uh, some of the ways they put up, they, it doesn't reach many eyes. It just doesn't reach the mm-hmm. right person. I mean, your artwork might not be interesting to one person, but it will be interesting to one another person. And it has to reach that. Way. So I feel uh, marketing might not have been important uh, in the previous times, 
we used to go to gallery and exhibit our work and everybody used to come there but these are the new galleries yeah uh, make a space async uh, non origin super rare these are the new galleries so people do come there but beyond that uh, i see twitter as a platform which is way much more powerful right now at least uh, in terms of sharing your work so mm-hmm. beyond that if there are these platforms which is focus on crypto art and nft like uh, see behind the art uh, i would love to see more uh, amazing creators come share their story share their art work and you know it's, it's always good to learn from them also i mean i i, I am always a person who is looking to learn new ways of creation and uh, learn their view of creation basically they concept of yeah that would be amazing to learn i mean i've been following your channel for some time now uh, and uh, yeah a lot of things which people say during these times like say for example matt cain said something during uh, one of his talks and i'm like okay that's something which i can relate with and that's something i'm going to adopt it. so yeah. so that th- that's how that's how we evolve as a community so yeah yeah absolutely and i think it is like what you just said like hearing matt cain say something on the stream or or whatever it is like that's such such a special thing to be able to connect with someone over something that's not you know even a little bit removed from art um just something that they believe in or something they say and it also like in a way not that art isn't humanized but it humanizes it a bit more by attaching the face um to to the work or even just the voice if not the face um so i think that's really special for you to have those connections but also for everyone else to have those connections because it makes artists or anyone community members collectors feel a part of something feel that there's a purpose a reason all of those sorts of things in this space and i've seen that for so many people that have come into the space that nfts um selling their nfts have totally changed their lives which is amazing um and i'm sure we're going to see a lot more of that in in the coming time so um that's awesome to hear you chat about that and kind of think about the future yourself um and while we're also talking about these sort of other artists and coming into the space uh do you mind if we pull up the async pieces and you can I'm feel free really and... curious to know yeah okay you can feel free and chime in with me um i'm going to pull these up here let me make sure you guys can see them okay i think i think oh. you can awesome um there uh okay there we go sorry i just want to make sure it's working on youtube um so Async is such a unique place and obviously you've launched some stuff um on Async as well but I just wanted to have the show just share share as much about different artists and artwork as we can um so right now we're just going to share a couple pieces that are up on Async um and I have not personally I don't personally know a lot of these artists but i think it's really exciting to just see the different work that's coming on to these platforms. Um so this artist Horus created this piece, the art we share. Um and it's it's just a really visually beautiful but also like intriguing piece. The first thing when i'm looking here is you see like this symmetry, but then you also see like in the back it uh right on the back waist of all of these different human figures you see like a different colored block which is so interesting to me and without even reading the description or anything like that i it to me it looks like almost these different human like human figures trying to piece together something in this middle you know once you walk up the stairs in this middle space to see what fits and what the right thing is to like unlock something which i know sounds weird but it's kind of fun to to discover like what you think about the pieces be- before you you know what the artist's intent was um but i i really enjoyed this piece when i saw it so i wanted to share this one for sure yeah yeah i mean i i'm obsessed with the number 7 in uh, uh-huh. in many ways so uh, i see that there are six people standing outside and there is one person who i hope i mean i think is uh, lying down he dead or something like that. not hope but uh, i feel but yeah what i'm saying is that that's a, that might be the seventh person 
that might be the seventh color and uh, yeah i could see the whole concept based on the four colors given the red blue the uh, orange and the purples so there is this another one color which is lying down there and there definitely is a meaning which is beyond what we usually see is what i feel so yeah that's, yeah that's something i like to no think i think that's about. a great interpretation one of the things i mean i love the, about art is that everyone can interpret it differently mm -hmm. and and it can yeah. mean something different to every single person which i think is really just unique and cool um okay another piece i wanted to pull up so this one the new block um is uh, really yes. yeah it's first of all it's just visually beautiful um i wish i should have when i first pulled these up actually some of these looked a little bit different because the this piece actually changes depending on the day to night cycles um so right now you're starting to see a different color scheme than i saw you know an hour ago which is interesting and really beautiful um and i also think just the the f fact of our world and the state of our world everyone being mm -hmm. for the most part in lockdown um this piece is really special because it has this sort of mirror or doorway within the middle of the piece reflecting back um and i don't know it looks kind of mysterious but hopeful with a bright setting and like you just want to go inside and like see what's what's in the mirror kind of thing uh but i think it's just visually beautiful i love the colors in this one and this one's by mankind um yeah so there was this uh, recent news uh that there was a monolith discovered in utah uh -huh. i don't know if you've read it but uh, if you if you just uh, check out that image it was so you will see how mankind's uh, art is so timely it was uh, discovered i think a week back or maybe less than that so you j just just check out the image of that and you see it's, it's so just the same thing cool i will so like yeah he, he just dropped the art so timely that's awesome i love when that happens that's awesome i'm definitely going to check that out um and also a lot of these artists when you go when you're discovering like artists on these platforms the really cool thing is if you click on their profile just showing for mankind for example it's really nice because often they'll have like their instagrams or something linked um so you can you know go here and experience their other work um that they create um these are just so cool and i love how you can see in in mankind's work you can see this repeating block mm -hmm. sort of in the middle even within these. Um, so it's really, it's really interesting um, to see, to see that when you, when you start clicking through other folks, well, clicking through their work. Um, oh, we caught a really quick glimpse of what that looked before it changed. But this one's also on a day and night cycle. Um, this one is by Tyson Parks. And it was just really intriguing to me. Like I didn't, ex I didn't exactly know what um what the intention was for the viewer but i thought it was really interesting with the with the circle at the bottom this sort of like morphed square at the top and then the person like almost like sealed in the star of this piece like on a wall it was just such a a unique piece that i i just would have never thought the combination before um, and then the, the uh, description is, is a quote by Leonardo da Vinci. So I just thought it was, it was definitely an interesting piece that I, I wanted to share. Yeah, I see a lot of geometry there. And mm -hmm. uh, the, usually the circle is, I mean, the person is at the center of the circle, but it's a different composition. Yeah, absolutely. And I, um, during the, the day cycle, this, um, red square is actually much more saturated mm. and you can't see the person as much you actually i didn't even notice him at first and then i looked i looked further and saw him very you know just barely and then at the night cycle you can see him more so i think it's just such an interesting piece that i wanted to share um and then the last piece we have up here you saw a first snapshot of the day cycle um but that changed over as well 
this one also changes on a day and night cycle. And for those of you that are watching this that aren't exactly sure what that means, um, like we've been chatting about this whole episode, Async Art is really a unique platform where um, artists can have different layers um, that basically change dependent on something. So, you know, this, these works are changing dependent on the day and night cycle. So something within them changes when that time zone switches, um, or that time passes. There's also things, uh, like the location that we talked about at the beginning. There's, there's just a plethora of different, um, things that can change a piece. And also artists can give power uh, to collectors as well. So collectors can t turn on and turn off different states or change the position or change the main character or whatever it is. Um, so that's that's sort of what we're talking about within these. Um, this one, I think the name is David. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, um, but The Empty Room. I just thought this was so cool. It looked like it was like a snapshot from some interesting movie and I loved how the there it looks like the TV, you know, is really is sort of outdated, but it has something coming out of it and sort of like filling the room. And there is a monkey on a chair with a pig's head like mask and a robot and then this sort of like UFO blimp out the window. It's very bizarre to me because it looks so um it looks minus the the TV blimp or the the blimp UFO thing and, and the robot like it looks very old school like setting like it looks like a room from I don't know like 1995 but then there's these weird futuristic aspects that are really interesting to this piece and I just thought it was it was beautiful I also love the description the first line there is nothing more mysterious than a TV set left on in an escape room yeah i do love that and then it, the the cool part with it being mysterious and then also like adding to it with the with literal like specks floating around and filling yeah. the room is just so cool it does make it even more mysterious um yeah and then the the last line uh or we'll read the whole thing uh it, it is even stranger than a man talking to himself or a woman standing dreaming at her stove it is as if another planet is communicating with you. So I, I, the thing I love about that is it's like where it, that tells us a bit of how the artist was inspired to create this, like, you know, and they just thought about all the weird uh, sounds and, and, and whatever was coming from the TV and how bizarre it was. It's quite cool. Awesome. Thank you guys for, for watching those. Those are just kind of fun. I want to do more of those with um, different pieces from all the different art platforms and, and new stuff coming up. And it would be fun to highlight a new artist every single episode and not have any repeat just so we could get like as many as we possibly can on these episodes. But um, back to our episode and the closing questions. Um, I would love to just ask you some of these questions. They're just for fun. Um, uh, just so we can, you know, continue to get to know you a little bit more and kind of put you on the spot here. But, um, so the first question, what is a skill that you wish you had? Patience. Patience. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm a bit impatient when it comes to a lot of things. So I hope that Okay, that's awesome. Um, that's that's one that you can definitely build up and work on. You know, it's it's not something like singing where I feel like if you're not naturally a good singer, you probably won't ever be. So at least yeah. that's something you can you can build up. Um, what is your favorite animal? The eagle. I mean, it's a bird, oh. but yeah, the eagle. Yeah. Oh, very. I'm, I'm, cool. a, I'm a big uh, Assassin's Creed fan, so starting from there, it's the eagle. Okay, that's a good one. We haven't had that one yet. Um, if, uh, oh yeah, your your favorite place on earth, near or far? Home. Uh, my hometown, basically. Uh, I'm from a home place called uh, Alapi uh, mm -hmm. in Kerala, India. So yeah, that's my favorite place. Okay, I love that. It's always nice to hear people, when people say that 
their home or like their backyard or something is their favorite place because it's, it's just cool to have you know that place that you can hopefully go back to a lot um what was cool when you were young but is not cool now uh eating a lot of food basically i'm a foodie so okay it was really cool at that time and nah, not not recommended right now <laughs> okay that's a good one that's a really good one i was thinking like some like weird like thing you guys used to do at school but i like that that's very realistic yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> would you want to live forever if you had your health? Definitely no. I believe in things, uh, I believe how things are timed. I believe in change. I believe uh, how things should change. So I would definitely won't want to live forever. Okay. That's but I'm just to add to that, I also believe there is some part of us which is eternal. So. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, um, many people yeah. believe we will yeah. live forever. So, but in a yeah. different in a different form or world. Um, uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum? Okay, this is tough, but uh, I would say Ethereum because Ethereum. that's how I started. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's a good one. And then um, the last two questions are NFT related. Um, number one, what is your favorite NFT? And then the number two question is, if you could get any NFT that's already created for free, which would it be? So you can answer in either order. Oh, okay, very tough questions because a lot of beautiful work out there. But uh, if I have to choose one, I would uh, choose uh, Murat Park's, Park's uh, mm -hmm. work which is uh, the meeting, which, was, which he created recently. Uh, it's, it's essentially a piece with a lot of uh, uh, Guy Fox masks uh, looking at each other. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I, I remember uh, uh, reading about uh, 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 the whole concept of, uh, you know, remember, remember the 30th, yeah. 5th of number. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, yeah, that piece was very timely. That piece was very perfect at that time. And I think that is the piece I would say, which I want to collect That's a really cool piece. for free. Um, collect for free. Hmm. I think uh, there is a, an artist called Nadia Purkush. Uh, she is an artist in Maker's Place, and she creates this very simple but beautiful illustrations. I would definitely want to own a piece of her work, but I don't know if it is required as free. I mean, I would love to support her also. So yeah, definitely uh, that would be one of the pieces I would love to see. Yeah. That's awesome. Those are really good choices. So thank you for sharing those. It's always interesting to hear what people's choice of their favorite NFT or what they would want to collect because it gives us kind of a view into what um what types of work you you like to view all the time so that's really awesome um thank you so much for being on the stream and you walked us through so much uh really really cool awesome stuff like and such a wide range which is really unique um to be able to show even like physical drawings and how that you know the ar and the ai and the and everything you 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 were able to wrap up like all these different technologies um into your pieces and show it successfully on here um if anyone does have questions or anything feel free and drop them in here while we're closing up also um you uh, is twitter the best way to reach you for folks that are watching this after i do have that linked in the description box or is there a better way um for folks to reach out to you as well after this I think Twitter, yes, Twitter is the best way. Okay, yeah. Twitter is kind of the best way for, I think, most of us since yeah. the crypto world lives on Twitter, especially with yeah. all the crazy prices going on right now. Um, everyone is on Twitter checking what's out. Uh, Museum of Crypto Art said amazing interview. Thanks to all. Thank you for joining us and, and uh, coming to drop in the chat. Can't wait for the field trip to Japan that um, 
Uh, you promised cool. us all. So <laughs> just the people watching though right now. And uh, that was awesome. Cool. Well, I will close this up here. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, for everyone that's watching that is celebrating the holiday this week in the U.S., have an amazing and safe holiday. Um, otherwise, everyone just continues staying safe wherever you are. And thank you so much for coming on the show. I can't wait to see all the new work you have coming up and even just hearing you speak about your plans for next year and celebrating other artists coming into the space. I'm really excited about that, and I love that. Um, that attitude and, and that spirit. So thank you for sharing that with us tonight or this morning. <laughs> thank you, Josie. I mean, I'm really glad I was in this platform. I hope I didn't bore anyone of you with all no. the words. The, <laughs> the exact the opposite. But, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really glad to be in this platform and I hope and wish to see all the amazing artists out there yeah, eventually come to this platform. And uh, yeah, this is something I keep a tab on because it's easy for me to watch also. Uh, mm -hmm. being in some of the, in a time which is uh, easy uh, but uh, yeah I mean it was really great to be here and uh, yeah uh, we'll talk soon awesome. and yeah stay safe yes 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 for everyone all right yeah. great well we'll see you guys on the next one thanks guys bye thank you bye